Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. I am especially thankful to the broad and diverse group of Burlington community leaders who are here today and who've come together to share their concerns about the proposed charter change before that is before voters for this town meeting day. Um, I want to start by saying this. Burlingtonians rightly expect our police officers to be held to high standards. This has been a core value of our community for a long time, and it's very much a value on the minds of Burlingtonians today. We've done much in recent years to ensure that we live up to that value. And Chief Murad and I, the City Council, and the Police Commission have all committed to more of this hard and important work in the months ahead to get this key aspect of our policing policies right. This proposed charter change, however, does not get community oversight right. The oversight structure detailed in the charter change has little to no precedent in the country. It lacks basic protections to ensure the fairness we must offer our officers to succeed at rebuilding the department. And it will be needlessly and wastefully expensive, draining limited resources from other social reform and public safety priorities. There's lots more to say about each of those three points, and we have created a memo to the city council that details with citations why, um, uh, why I believe each of those, those three points. The final point I wanna make uh, before hearing from a number of, of other partners, and we're not, gonna, we're not gonna make you hear from everybody, but we are gonna, gonna hear from uh, quite a few of the folks up here. Um, the other point I wanna make is this. The language before the voters is not a place to start the conversation. Rather, it is binding. If this language is passed by voters in March, there will be no further opportunity at the local level to work on the charter change language and will advance straight to the legislature and the governor for approval. That specific language includes some um, uh, important things for Burlingtonians to be aware of. It, it includes creating a new control board for police oversight that would be an entirely independent department of the city. That independent department would be empowered to hire staff to investigate any incident, to choose its, what it wants to have jurisdiction over, and to discipline BPD staff without input from the chief or any opportunity within the city system for appeal. The board will set its own budget, and it's unclear what, if any, oversight over that budget the city council and the mayor would have. Board members cannot include anyone who has ever served in a law enforcement agency, but they do not have to live in Burlington. Unlike every other commission and board that we have here in Burlington, the control board members would be appointed by a committee created by independent nonprofits not by elected official, officials that are accountable to the voters. And that is just a sampling of the many concerning details of this binding proposal. So now I'd like to uh, welcome to the podium um, one of our key public safety partners, one of our key partners in ensuring that Burlingtonians have um, uh, the proper mental health services here in Burlington, one of our key treatment provider partners, the Howard Center and Matthew McNeil. Thank you. Uh, I'm Matthew McNeil from the Howard Center. Uh, as an organization, we deeply appreciate that the decision on the proposed part the charter change is now in the hands of the voters. And we encourage everyone to educate and inform themselves on both sides of the issue. Uh, after our own thorough review, uh, we do not believe that the proposed charter change is in the best interest of our city, uh, nor the people who live here, work here, or visit here. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. <clears throat> uh, next, I'd like to welcome uh, another uh, key city partner, Dr. Stephen Leffler of the University of Vermont Medical Center. Thank you, Moreau. Um, the UVM Medical Center strongly agrees with the sentiment of Burlington residents and many in this country that police reform, accountability, and transparency are of the utmost importance, especially as it pertains to institutional and systemic inequities. This is especially true right now, while we're still reeling from the murder of Tyree Nichols. While the medical center and the hospital is not experts in law enforcement reform, we are experts in what has been happening in our emergency department. 
We have seen a significant, significant increase in violence against the staff in our ED over the past 24 months. Our staff have sustained head injuries, lacerations, broken bones, and in several cases, facial injuries so severe they required surgery. Across our state, there are healthcare workers who've left their careers or been permanently disabled as a result of an increase in violence we are seeing in our departments and hospitals. I'm an emergency physician by training. Over my career, I've seen a huge increase in violence in our department and a decrease in Burlington Police's ability to respond in a timely fa fashion. We must be able to rely on our law enforcement partners to keep our staff and patients safe. While we completely support accountability and transparency, the proposed charter changes cause us grave concern for the safety of our staff and our patients. We cannot support a charter change that would have the potential of further diminishing the Burlington Police Department's ability to respond to violence in our emergency department or hospital. I greatly fear this measure would put our staff at further risk. Because of this, we ask voters of Burlington to vote no on this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leffler. Um, we, um, we, next, I don't think he's made it here yet. I know Damian uh, Gilbert from AFSME is attempting to get here. He had a personal conflict as well and uh, maybe may still be able to join us before this is done. Um, next up, I'd like to uh, welcome Kathy Davis from the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce. Kathy, thank you. Kathy Davis with the Lake Champlain Chamber. Uh, so rarely is there a day when I don't speak to somebody about public safety. Uh, I hear from business owners, I hear from employees downtown, I hear from visitors who are choosing Burlington, I hear from uh, members of our nonprofit and social services community, and I hear from other residents outside of Burlington that love the city as much as the rest of us. Uh, we know that improving our public safety is multifaceted, but we also know that retaining the officers we have and hiring more officers is a part of those solutions. And knowing that that's part of our goals, we need to avoid additional obstacles to the retention and hiring of good officers in Burlington. As a result, um, we are asking voters to vote no on question seven on the March ballot for that reason, because we think it's a risky experiment and that it will serve as an impediment to hiring and retaining those who serve our community. Another important part of our conversation in our mind on public safety is about building trust. And we know that trust is earned and that trust goes both ways. And we think that excluding anyone with law enforcement experience from this board doesn't build the trust we need, it actually breaks it. Um, over the past couple of years, our business community has proved itself to be more resilient than any of us could have imagined. And we need your help now, though, to ensure that Burlington remains safe for all who live here, who work here, and want to visit here. And we do ask that uh, residents of Burlington vote no on question seven in, on the March ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, now we'd also like to hear from Kelly Devine, the executive director of the Burlington Business Association. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Everything Kathy said plus this. Um, our city's ability to deliver public safety, safety services is a concern for everyone, residents, businesses, people who come to work here. Our community also is very concerned and I think committed to advancing our ability to become a more equitable and just place for everyone who wants to be here. The reality today is that people who work downtown and visit downtown do report being challenged with public safety issues when visiting here or working here. Staff at our restaurants and stores, they're being harassed, they're being threat threatened and assaulted on a weekly basis. We are losing businesses like L.O. Bean, who are leaving town for 
a variety of reasons, but they always cite public safety as one of them. We need to focus on rebuilding the Burlington Police Department, not tearing it down. We need to give more reasons for folks to come and work at the Burlington P Police Department, not more reasons for them to leave. We're at a critical juncture. This ballot question puts our city's public safety services at great risk. It is yet another risky experiment on Burlington's critical public safety services. If it were to pass, I think the impacts on our residents, on our downtown community, on the businesses who come here, and the people who love this place could be immense. We are absolutely supporting a no vote on question seven. Thank you. So um, I uh, want to also note um, and thank uh, Kyle Blake from the Burlington Firefighters Association for being here and being part of this coalition. We have a number of uh, past and present um, city councilors. We're going to hear from one of them in a moment, Ben Travers. Um, uh, and um, we, uh, in addition to the leaders of the business associations, I want to uh, thank um, uh, Mark, for, who is currently the chair, uh, Mark Boucher, the, the chair of the Church Street Marketplace, currently and longtime retailer on Church Street, for being here as well. And and Becky, thank you uh, for, for your long commitment to the downtown and being here as well. Um, with that, uh, uh, Ben, uh, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, ben Travers, Ward 5 City Councilor. I want to echo uh, recognition of past city councilors as well as current councilors, uh, Sarah Carpenter and Maya Brandt for being here today and agree with all the comments you've heard thus far. I think the group you see here today is just a small part of a broad, diverse coalition of Burlingtonians who've expressed great concerns about the selection criteria for this board, its accountability to voters, the breadth of the authority it would be given, the extent to which it takes away the chief's existing disciplinary authority, the cost of this department, and so on. It is an untested, unprecedented experiment, I think is the right word. A couple of years ago, the city council experimented by cutting the cap of officers in the Burlington Police Department. We cannot afford to experiment again with public safety. I'd like to just talk a moment though about process and public engagement. Burlington is a community where folks want to be heard and they want their elected officials to be responsive to that feedback. I appreciate the efforts of the folks who put this petition drive together. Uh, it's not an easy feat to secure that many signatures. The way this ballot measure has come forward, however, does not allow for the kind of public engagement our Burlington community is used to. Charter changes almost always go through a careful, deliberative process before the city council where over the course of multiple public meetings, we work together to come up with a measure that hopefully has broad community support. It is important for voters to understand that because this measure is coming forward by petition, state law precludes the city council from making any amendments responsive to the kind of feedback and concerns you're hearing today. This is not how we should be legislating. And regardless of how you feel about the content of the proposal, I think the lack of public process and community engagement on this is reason enough for people to vote no on question seven. I do want to acknowledge though, the city's mission towards equity. I think we should note that today is the second day of Black History Month. We owe it to our community to continue a discussion on police oversight and accountability. A no vote is not a vote against oversight and accountability. A no vote is against the experimental measure that has been forced before voters. We will be introducing a resolution before the city council asking the community to vote against this resolution, but also opening an opportunity for us to continue to hear from the feed, uh, feedback from the community, for us to continue to listen to the public, and for the ordinance committee and charter change committee to act over the coming months to see if we can come to a proposal on accountability and oversight that has the more broad support of the folks here and the rest of our community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> Thank you, Ben. Um, we have been joined by Damian Gilbert. Damian, we're, we're glad you were able to make it, and the uh, podium is yours. 
How y'all doing today? My name is uh, Damian Gilbert. I'm the president of Local 1343 for AFSME, for uh, all municipal workers in the school department. I have some really major concerns on the committee that the uh, Progressive Party is bringing forward on due process. I believe that every worker that is part of a union has the ability to have fair due process and go to arbitration. I don't think it's wise to support this agenda for this committee based on the fact that the individuals and even the officers alone that are part of the union already have a disciplinary action process. The city already has a progressive, comprehensive policy that's in place <clears throat> for disciplinary steps that they can easily go beyond those other than a verbal reprimand. Their CBA, which is pretty current probably to ours, has the same disciplinary action too and it can be progressive and you can jump the steps on that as well. I've read the um, agenda that's been put forth for this committee and even to be the mayor himself or the city council, let alone directors, they have to be a city resident in order to be on that council. Any part of any other committees in this agenda that they have there does not. It has a three and a four year term where anybody can be appointed to it that may not have a background in human resources that would warrant any kind of disciplinary action, let alone termination. I am not in support for the municipality workers for AFSCME only because of this could have a trickle effect and it could affect every union based on the language of what they have instilled for the, um, against the, to supersede the, any contract that the city's already agreed to. Um, I will not be in support and I will talk to my members and make sure that they know as well not to be in, uh, in support of ballot seven. So um, I really thank you for your time and I think every voter should really take the time to read what they put together. And um, I think it's egregious and I'm here to support the other union workers to make sure that um, this doesn't go forward. Thank you for your time. And thank you, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, um, with that, I think that's, uh, those are our prepared uh, remarks. We'd be happy to, to answer some questions if there are any. Go on once, or twice. The chief has already weighed in on this, and the union has as well. And um, from my perspective, uh, it's important for other voices to be heard in this debate as well. So uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. Sure, Courtney, and, and you know, I do want to um, just going back to your first question. I, I certainly there uh, there there are additional opportunities to, to to speak to the chief and union directly. Um, I think it can sound uh, self serving when it's coming from from the officers. That's feedback I've heard. So I thought it, I thought it was important that we hear today from a really broad cross section of Burlingtonians and Burlington organizations. Um, <clears throat> The, if you look at the details of this proposal, it lacks the basic protections of fairness that um, we have in our current disciplinary systems here in Burlington, and that um, in every uh, that exists in every other uh, police oversight disciplinary board that we have been able to look at and study. Um, those protections range every, from everything from how the board is constituted to ensure that there is uh, relevant expertise within the board members that are adjudicating a disciplinary matter. Um, there are um, the, the words due process, the requirements that there be fairness and due process is, is despite recommendations from the city attorney when this uh, when this language was being created a couple of years ago, do not do not exist there. There's no basic uh, standard there. Um, uh, another um, example is just that the lack of accountability that, that that this board has is unlike anything else 
uh, in our in our system. This is instead of being again appointed by the city council and the mayor, as we do with all of our other boards. The way this appointment process happens is that individuals are put on this board. First, the selection first. The council and the mayor choose a group of nonprofits. That nonprofits then gets to create a, an appointment committee. The appointment committee then creates this board. There is then no recall uh, provision or ability to remove members for cause. It's it's a completely unaccountable uh, unaccountable board. So, um, I think it, it disciplinary matters can be. Uh, depend a great deal on the details. They can be controversial. They can be uh, tough judgment calls to make. And there are no protections in place in the way this charter language is written to ensure um, that fairness standards are met. And that, you know, that's the heart of, of my concern. We are in a position where we have lost more than 40% of our police department. We have put millions of dollars into attempting to rebuild that department. We have put great energy and effort into that. And uh, we, if we are going to be successful in that effort, and there's some early signs of momentum of this rebuilding effort, if we are going to be able to be successful, we need to ensure fairness. And I just don't think that this, uh, this charter change makes any attempt to ensure that, despite, uh, despite that being raised repeatedly um, in, in past years. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So first of all, yes, I, Chief Murad, the administration, the city council, the existing police commission are, are all committed to a strong system for ensuring uh, accountability for our police officers. And I think it's important to not be lost in this conversation that many steps have been taken since 2016 to, uh, and even before, uh, to improve, to, to ensure that our, our officers are held to a high standard, to ensure accountability, to name just a, a few of the major examples. We were one of the first departments in New England to require every officer to wear a body camera. And we have continued to refine our body camera policies, including in, in recent weeks, we now, you've seen the first of the examples of how we are, uh, we, have, we have added resources to be able to release uh, body camera footage um, very quickly after use of force incidents. We have dramatically uh, <clears throat> expanded the, the roles of the police commission to, we've codified that um, all use of force in incidents and all complaints will be re reviewed by that, uh, that commission and they will have an opportunity to advise the chief before the chief renders uh, a disciplinary decision. Um, I, I, we are working under an executive order now that I issued in, in late 2020 that um, ensures that uh, on use of force incidents, use of force incidents of, of significant public interest that I get to weigh in after hearing from the city attorney, from the racial equity, inclusion and belonging director, from other key members of the administration, I get to weigh in and make a recommendation uh, to the chief. I've long thought, so those are just three examples of how the, this system has changed recently. Maybe the most important one I haven't said yet, uh, let me just say is this, we, our officers today are bound by a uh, new use of force policy written in 2020 that goes way beyond what the former uh, policy did to require um, officers to uh, attempt to de-escalate and uh, uh, use only the force that is necessary to uh, deal with uh, whatever incident they're facing. That was such a strong and good policy. It's become actually statewide policy in many ways now for the whole state of Vermont. So many, many steps have been taken. Uh, in recent years, we're not done with that work. I would support going farther. Um, one thing I welcome about this vote is um, it has been very challenging to move forward with any um, possible charter change. And I do think ultimately a charter change is uh, necessary to get the, the right balance uh, that we want in this community. It has been very challenging to advance that conversation with 
the this concept of the control board being out there gathering uh, support um, from petitions. Uh, there has been uh, there were several attempts that were made to advance a conversation about charter changes, and with this hanging out there, we weren't able to get anywhere with that conversation. It is true that there's also there was a uh, use of a, a new ordinance for the um, police commission that would, within our existing charter language, um, <clears throat> refine and detail uh, the roles and responsibilities clear, give them some additional formal authority. It was actually Dan Richardson who drafted um, that ordinance. There were uh, concerns that we, we have been unable to reach consensus on that. Um, and uh, I do, in some ways, trace that back to this outstanding question about what the charter is going to say. So um, following town meeting day, if, if this ballot item is rejected, uh, I think there will be a new, there'll be some clarity from that, and there'll be a new ability for us to attempt to find a consensus on what further changes are needed. Um, at the same, same time, I want to go back to the point I started. We have already done a great deal to ensure high standards and officer accountability, and I hope all Burlington voters are clear on that when they go to the ballot box. I, I am uh, opposed to uh, that, that charter change as well. Uh, my concern there, um, you know, maybe I don't feel quite as strongly because I don't think quite the same, uh, the, the stakes are not quite as, as high as they are with, uh, with the control board charter change where I really do feel that um, our ability to provide the public safety uh, that Burlingtonians expect is, is hanging in, in the balance on, uh, on, on the outcome of this decision. I really, uh, so I have not put as much effort. You're not finding a, a memo f from me on that today. I do, uh, I do, I do, I am concerned about that. I, and, you know, I've been in this role for 11 years now. We've had a number of instances where I would say usually when petitioners, um, organize, put in the energy to bring forward uh, some kind of petition. If there's a request for a ballot item, that is something the city council and I take very seriously. And the great majority of the time we will, we will, we are, we, we um, will act on that effort and, and put the, the item on the ballot. There have been a couple of instances where um, the timing, the circumstances surrounding that particular issue uh, uh, have meant that it, it it was either too late or problematic timing for for going going to the voters. A couple examples of that I can give you are with City Hall Park. We had spent a, a decade of work. We had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, we had gone through enormous amounts of public process. Jane O'Dell and I spent much of uh, the summer of 2018 sitting. Uh, I think it was over at the police department, right? It was in the community room over there. Or, you know, maybe it was in the old conference room 11, but we went through tree by tree to determine which trees we would remove, which ones we would keep. Uh, we had done an enormous amount of work. We had reached a political compromise that uh, there was broad support for. We were out to bid on trying to build, uh, renovate City Hall Park when the petitions came in saying, Hold, slow down, wait, let's wait until uh, the voters get a chance to weigh in here. I thought that was, I thought it would be very problematic if the council didn't have the authority to do what they did, which is to say, you know, this, this, this is coming to us too late. Uh, we've invested too much. We've literally spent too much. We've invested too much energy and time. It's time, time to go forward and build. And I appreciate it very much. The council took that action. If Prop Zero passed, they wouldn't be able to do that is my understanding of it. Um, I can give you other examples, but that, that's what it comes down to. You know, I, I give you just one example. I mean, it, it's it, the 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 deficiencies it, uh, that we normally see, as I tried to detail before. There, there are many things that we typically see in required and disciplinary processes 
um, that are required that, that are not here. Uh, an example of that, you know, I think we think of an appeal right as a basic uh, due process right. There's no provision for uh, a, an appeal within the city system in uh, in this. Um, uh, in, in this language, uh, the only appeal possible is to go, you know, to, is to, to go to court, to go to superior court. There's even a similar provision and, you know, something I heard, uh, you know, I think Damien was, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I heard there was real discomfort on there's an ability of this board to suspend uh, individuals without pay for, for two weeks with no opportunity to, gr to grieve that decision. Uh, just from my perspective in reviewing it, and, and I do sit currently as the chair of the ordinance committee, I think there's certain central tenets to due process that you don't see in this measure. Uh, the board, the proposed board has incredibly broad authority with respect to uh, those uh, incidents of misconduct that they can take action on. For example, uh, the board can uh, take disciplinary action on any misconduct uh, in an officer's private life without providing any guardrails around what is misconduct and, and what is the bar uh, over which uh, the board can take action. Uh, another important part to due process is that uh, you will be heard by a, a neutral, independent uh, arbiter. It, when you go before a court, you're heard before an independent, neutral judge. Uh, here we have a, an unelected board uh, selected by selection criteria that we don't see for any other uh, board or commission in the city. Uh, and as the mayor pointed out, uh, the appeal right is, is to the superior court. There is uh, no longer the kind of appellate mechanism uh, that you see right now here. So those are my concerns around due process, but I do think the concerns even go uh, well beyond uh, the due process rights that folks here have laid out, uh, the, the, the breadth of the authority, the selection criteria that goes into this, the fact that the board, unlike any other board or commission in the city, is, is not truly representative, I, I believe, of our community. Uh, there are lots of concerns there as well. Okay, um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, thank you again to uh, the many partners here today. And um, we uh, look forward to talking more with you about this and uh, other, other town meeting day items over the next, over the coming weeks. Thank you.